Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how I have tackled art on a cart with clay. Alright, here are my carts. I've got this <laughs> messy, disastrous clay that I tried to re-soften. Um, and I've scraped off some of the softest, squishy parts and put it in a bucket so it can get a little air. Sponges. Uh, I've got my needle tool and my cutting tool and some lotion because my hands get dried after washing them 7,000 times. I've got boards uh, to put kids' final work on. What I do is I'll just draw a line and a grid on here, and then as they bring up their work, they just write their name in their square and set their piece down. After it's um, dry, I'll use a um, ceramics pencil, one that won't burn away in the kiln. I don't know why I'm liking on that, what it's called, uh, but to write their names on the bottom. Um, I find that having kids do it themselves, just I can never tell what they are. And they always end up fighting about whose piece is whose. I've got some early finisher things, um, some finish the picture, um, just random half and half pictures where kids draw the other half of the picture. And then I've got um, some old paper from the stock room that kids are going to use as clay mats on their tables. I was going to try and use like fancy laminated mats or something else like that, but I think we're just going to use this uh, good old nasty construction paper. So I'm double carting it today, and then I'll unload the boards with finished work. Um, hopefully between the four shelves, that'll be enough to fit one class at a time, and then I can unload in an empty classroom um, between classes. Here we go. So a couple other things on my cart. Um, hand sanitizer wipes, and of course, hand sanitizer. Keep that with me at all time. Extra pencils, because there's somehow always a kid that still doesn't have a pencil. I don't really know how that happens. Uh, of course, my clipboard with my lesson plans and seating charts and stuff. And of course, my laptop. And I'm going to use um, Cassie Stevens' introductory video while I'm passing out clay today. Thank God for Cassie Stevens. Bless you. Well, we survived the morning. I did three classes back to back. Fourth grade, second grade, then third grade. This is the end results from third grade. And... Um, that they worked out, they turned out the best. I actually got quite a few good pots from fourth grade too. I told them if it wasn't exactly what they wanted it to be, they could just squish it up and they'd get another chance to try it again. So um, my second grade was a disaster. It was a super hot mess of a class. And so, um, I mean, they sort of always are anyway. But um, for these ones, I had them smooth it with a popsicle stick and then smooth with a finger to try and get that smoothed out even more on the inside. Some did a really good job on that actually. And then again, if it didn't turn out great, I told them they'd get a chance to do it again another day. So um, I'm actually pretty impressed with how most of these turned out. And then I'll explain my step-by-step -step process as well. But um, I'm feeling like this is a good project. Did not go well with second grade, but pretty good with third and fourth. So I think this would be good for third, fourth, and fifth. And I'm hoping I can tweak it so it'll be good for second grade too. So as a final touch on these, I would normally never touch a student's artwork. I definitely let them do their own thing. And, you know, uh, if this was a high school class, I would definitely not do this. But um, for these guys, I'm just dipping my finger in a little water and just running it around the edge to give it just like one final smoothing. I'm not going to change the inside or do anything else, but uh, just to make the top nice and smooth, just running my finger around uh, once or twice. Uh, every kid deserves to have a nice finished edge on their project. So even if the rest is lumpy and bumpy and has some personality, this will make it a functional piece that they can put pencils in it without um, stabbing themselves. So I think this is a nice thing to do right at the end is to just run your finger around with just a little bit of water just to smooth out that final edge. I'm checking out your cool kindergarten pinch pot here. You're doing a great job. So I realized that pinch pots were definitely the way to go with kinder through second grade. I originally tried to do coil pots with my second graders, but pinch pots were a much better option. All right, here's what we ended up with for 45 minute uh, spiral coil pots. Not bad for fourth grade. And I'm actually going to just carve names on the bottom. I thought I was going to use an underglazed pencil, but it works just fine to carve. I've also flipped them upside down now that they're leather hard so that the bottom dries evenly and hopefully that'll give us even more even drying on the whole thing so they don't crack. So I just wanted to show how I organize things in the kiln. This is bone dry and getting ready for a bisque fire. Um, but I made for each of my classes, so I teach elementary and I have 32 classes. And to keep that straight, I've just made um, a little tile. Now we have 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 
2 B, 2 C, kindergarten one, or A, B, C. Um, so I just made a tile for each one, and rather than doing teachers' names, because teachers come and go, um, but the class numbers will always be the same. That way I don't ever have to redo them. And then on the bottom of my pots, I've carved in the name, and I luckily only have one class from each grade level right now. Normally I would have several, but at the moment I only have one, so um, I've carved the kids' names into the bottom with the grade number. Otherwise I would put the full class code on there. Um, but yeah, and with a bisque fire, um, you can actually stack things up. Now the risk is that they're gonna break, but it doesn't matter if they're touching. If you were doing glaze, of course they couldn't be touching each other. Um, but because this is bisque ware, um, or going to be bisque ware, it's okay if it's touching. Um, and in this case, even stacked, because I don't think any of these pieces are gonna explode or break each other, so. Yeah, simple enough. So that, my friends, is how I tackled art on a cart with clay. My process started with modeling clay. All the kids got a couple days worth of modeling clay practice, and we made different things, including practicing making uh, coil pots, and so that they were prepared before we got the real clay. Then we did the actual real clay. K through two did pinch pots. Third and fourth and fifth did coil pots and um, also some clay turtles. And then after that, they got free reign with some model magic and got to make anything they wanted to for the next few days. And I feel good about it all. Yay for clay!